It rained again. The bombs. All day. All night. Endless. Like a vivid bad dream you need to wake up from. But can't. There's no alarm, no sirens, no warning. Even when the terror has reached such heights that you should suddenly jolt out of your sleep in a sweat, you don't. Because in Gaza, there's no escaping the nightmare. Even when you're awake, even when you're asleep, there's no way out. For 28 hours, I had been helping with the wounded. For 28 hours, bombs fell, arbitrary explosions, adrenaline chaos, screams, fire, blood, smoke, burning bodies. Group efforts to uncover those trapped under the rubble. We all helped. We all wept. We all struggled. We all did what we had to do. Then the dust settled, which we all know will last only a short while, and there was quiet. It's the most uncomfortable quiet a person can ever know, more a sickening, cold, anxiousness. No one dares speak the unspeakable, we go looking for it instead. Exhausted beyond description, I'm struggling to keep my eyes open. I'm awake, but sleepwalking the streets. There's nothing to see but rubble on top of more rubble. Figures hurry past me carrying someone on a stretcher. I have become so used to the ugliness, to the mess. I start to differentiate and rate what damage looks better than the other as I stumble. What a silly little mind I must have to create mental beauty pageants of damage and destruction. In a daze, I drag on. It's overwhelming. The school with the huge gaping holes. The hospital, the markets, gone. Aburiyad and his family. Umzaina and her family in the street this morning. Both their homes destroyed, as if they only ever existed in my dreams. Their children are wailing, crouched down in the filth. Their parents busy collecting anything they can salvage. I can see Umzaina mumbling to herself, oblivious to her children bawling their eyes out. Hannah's eight-year-old eyes meet mine a moment, tears streaming down her face. I don't know what to say. How can she possibly understand this? Cars still burning, people digging with their bare hands, clawing at the earth and rubble. I want to help. But I need to get to my aunt's house now to check, to be sure that the family is okay and that my son is okay. I let them know I'm okay, and then I must rest. I wish I could call, but the network has been down for days. So instead, I walk. My parents gave up telling me that I need to try stay safe and take shelter a long time ago. Safe doesn't exist in Gaza. And shelter means nothing. Everyone knows that. There's a bitter taste in my mouth. 
as I make my way across Salah al-Din Street. I need water. I need to clear my throat. And my head is pounding. They had dropped chemicals on Gaza before. I feel paranoid. Is that what I'm tasting? So, so thirsty. I tell myself to focus. What was it I said I would do? Yes, go see if the family was okay. Kiss my baby boy. Find some water. Get some rest. And then get back to the clinic. How long do we have before it rains again? I stumble, shuffle, wander through the destruction to Al Nasser Street. Shattered glass crunching beneath my feet. And then Al Wahda Street. And round the corner. And that. That's when Payne himself dug his sharpest claws into my chest and refused to let go. My aunt's house, crushed in ruins. For a moment I checked my surroundings. Did I take a wrong turn? This can't be. My mother was in there, my sister, my aunt. My son. This isn't possible. This can't be possible. I'm hallucinating. I must be. I'm staring at what can't be real. I'm in the nightmare and I'm falling. Falling. I can't wake up. God, help me, please. Dear God, wake me up. I need to wake up. Men are shouting and they're pulling people out. I walk over. My legs feel so weak. I want to move faster. My mind is telling me to move faster, but I can't. And as it dawns on me that the unspeakable has happened, I feel my heart as if it's entered my throat, like it wants to exit my body. I feel like I want to shove my hand down my throat and rip it out. My own heart is suffocating me. And as I reach the sidewalk, there they are. My child. My sister and my mother laid out on the ground, covered in dark grey ash and dark red blood, asleep forever. And I can't breathe, and suddenly my legs collapse and I'm kneeling on the floor. And the pain is breaking over me in waves. And I'm holding my baby boy's tiny hand. And I'm wailing. And I now know at this moment more clearly than ever that I will never find a place to rest my head ever again. Alone and tormented with my questions. Was it fast? Was it slow? Did they suffocate? Did they burn? And I'm squeezing my son's limp, broken body in my arms. And I need to hold them all. And the pressure of the pain crushes me further and further deeper into the nightmare and I'm trembling and screaming at the top of my lungs now no words just screams I'm imploding self-destructing 
I want to sleep forever next to them, and I can't. I'm searching for an exit that doesn't exist. And I can't help but think those who did this are so distant from what they did. And here I am, feeling the most pain I have ever or will ever feel. And there's no deliverance from this. And I'm so utterly confused why the world abandoned us to this mass execution. And I feel so angry that no one will answer for this crime. For the murder of my family. For the murder of my baby. Which bomb specifically was it? I need to know. Who was flying that plane? What does he look like? Did he know where it would land? Did he care where it would land? Does he have children? How does he sleep at night? And in my madness, exhaustion, rage, loss, helplessness, or perhaps my pursuit of release from the nightmare. I banged my head against the hard ground, and there is blood dripping from my forehead, and I don't care, and I bang it again and again. And if I wasn't so very, very tired, I might not have stopped till dead on the ground. Finally free. Finally released from this prison. From this nightmare. From Gaza. <laughs>